Okay, in this next segment we're going to talk about putting the tail together. Uh, a couple things to go over. In the tail bag comes um, <clears throat> four little tapered head screws. Now I'm not sure what they're for, but the only thing they look like they're good for is either for holding the servo in, which I wouldn't use them for, or maybe if you need a low profile screw, because your servo's sitting on top here, you need a low profile screw for the bracket. That's possible too. Um, but these longer ones will not work for holding the boom support on or the tail fins on. Now the tail fins come with their own screws. They're, they're the knurled head Allen screws like what we used on the frame. Um, but the tail case has screws for holding the, fit, the horizontal fin. So you really don't need two of those. Now the only screws I found that will fit and hold on the boom supports to this bracket are two of these knurled head screws that come out of the fin package. So we'll use two of those to hold the boom supports onto this bracket and um, we'll go ahead and use a, a pan head. The, the pan heads with a shank on them that are a little bit longer cannot be used for tightening the, the boom clamp for the servo mount. <clears throat> so these must be used for either servos or the tapered head screws for servos. These shorter pan heads, what I mean by pan head, there's a little washer on there. Uh, those, those can be used to tighten up the boom clamps or again these tapered ones. So bottom line, knurled head screws for holding the boom supports onto this bracket. Two more to hold the horizontal fin onto this bracket. Uh, and that's the horizontal fin. Uh, <clears throat> and then we'll mess around with different screws for holding servos in and holding the bracket on. Now when you put the boom into the helicopter, such as this, Depending on the type of servo you're using, the bracket may go this way or it may go this way. The bottom line is use whichever way is best to get your servo so that your control rod's a straight shot. I'm going to be using an Airtronics 94761 and basically it's going to mount using the same hole that clamps the boom to get a straight shot. And so I'll show that when I'm done. But you'll have to play around with how those brackets go on depending on the servo you're using. The idea being get the straightest shot. Get it, use, the, use it the best way to get the straightest shot. Now let's talk about the tail case a little bit. I've put the blades on already. And the blades, when, they're on, when this is on the boom, the blades should rotate up into the main rotor. So they should be in this orientation if it was on the boom. Blades always rotate up into the main rotor. Now, unlike the Align grips, these are trailing edge control instead of leading edge control. So the pitch slider will be uh, working in an opposite direction, but I'll show that during setup. Um, but needless to say, you want to make sure that you don't assemble this backwards. You want this to rotate up into the, the main rotor downwash. So if it was on the heli like this, that's the direction they would turn. Okay, so mount your blades. Now as far as all these Allen screws, there's, uh, there's screws everywhere on this. Um, I would go ahead and check them. Some of the screws that stick out a little bit from the back, just back them with a little bit of Loctite if you don't want to take them out. Some of these other Allen screws I'd check, make sure they're Loctited, just go over the whole thing. Uh, these balls that are on here, the purpose of these balls is to space out the fin. So when you put the fin on, it's basically act as a spacer. Now the way this clamps onto the boom is there's just one screw with a nut, and that is the clamp for clamping onto the boom. Now, reviewing the boom, unlike the aligned boom, there's no registration notch or hole. So the beauty of this design is you can just simply put the tail case on, and then when you go to put it in the bird, you just turn it in the boot in the boom block until you know the, the the tail straight up and down in relation to the heli, and then tighten the blocks. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and assemble this, put the belt in the boom, uh, get the clamps on. Don't forget to put those on before you put it in the heli. Get the boom uh, braces on and then I'll show final assembly, okay? Okay, one thing I'd show, I thought I'd show during assembly is a cute little trick, and that is how to get the belt into the boom. Take a regular twisty tie off a loaf of bread or whatever and just trim a little piece, and then just take that little piece and just fold it over the belt. You don't even need to twist it, just fold it over, and that makes it easy to just feed this belt down into the boom without it snagging on you. Then just feed it all the way out the other side, until you see it come through and then once it's on that side you can take it off. Now what's important here is during this assembly is we want to make sure we don't have any extra twists in the belt. So what you want to do is you want to untwist the belt and find the, find the best way it works 
so that you don't feel the belt rubbing on each other. Now as I pull on the top of the belt, the tail will be rotating in the opposite direction. See, I've got a twist here now. There we go. So when I pull on the top of the belt, I should not feel the belt rubbing on, e on itself in here. And when I pull on the top of the belt, the, the tail rotor will rotate in the opposite direction that I want. If I pull on the bottom of the belt, the tail rotor will rotate in the direction we want. Okay, so make sure you don't have an extra twist because we're going to insert it in the boom like this, but we have to make a twist in the right direction to, to, sh to get the tail rotor right. So you'll, you'll feed it in vertical like this. Now, let's talk about the, the tail rotor pulley back here in the direction it turns. When I rotate the head in the proper direction that it's supposed to rotate in, which looking down on the head is a clockwise direction, the pulley here for the belt actually turns in an anti or counterclockwise direction. It rotates in this direction. Now remember, we need to have the, the um, tail rotate in its proper direction and that is we need it rotating up into the downwash of the main rotor like so. See that? So that what that means is if, I, if the pulley's rotating in an anti-clockwise direction we need to put it on here and only a half twist so that when it's rotating in an anti-clockwise direction like this, anti-clockwise, that the tail rotor will be rotating up into the downwash. So again, start out with the belt straight up and down, no kinks, so when you pull on it the tail rotor is not rotating in the right direction as you pull on the top and when we put it in the heli we're going to make a twist in this direction so in the anti-clockwise direction the pulley will be pulling up okay only a half turn it's important that the belt is not rubbing on itself in here you will eat belts okay so I'm going to continue with the assembly I'm going to go ahead and put this on the heli just as I explained the struts the clamps uh, get the servo mounted and we'll talk about the straight shot with the servo and that'll be our next step Okay, so we got our tail put together and let's do an overview. Holding the horizontal fin on, we use the knurled head cap screws, same things that were used to hold the frame together. Uh, they happen to be the right length. We use the same knurled head uh, cap, uh, Allen screws to hold the struts onto this bracket. Back here on the frames, we what the, when we first init uh, initially put the frames together, we used these, uh, again, knurled head cap screws. Well, they're too short to hold this support on. But in the bag that came with the supports and everything were some long cap heads. What I mean by cap heads, they have a washer built into them. And they have a section that is not threaded. And so they're very long, and those work perfect for holding these struts onto the frame. So you'll take out those frame knurled screws and put those in. Okay, so that's the struts. Back here on the tail, uh, we used a, the, a long, in, in the, the bag that came with all this, you got a, a long knurled head cap screw that had a section, again, without threads on it, and it's extra long. You use that here. It's still a little short, so you're only going to get about six threads. So this one doesn't have to be overly tight. Just lock tight it well and snug it up. What's really holding this fin on is the boom clamp, and again, don't forget to lock tight your boom clamp back here, your boom clap Allen screw that comes all the way through, you put a nut on here and that's what really secures the fin. Okay, so and then on the control rod, again this is the Airtronic servo, so we have our clevis here with our screw that comes in the kit and what I use to hold the servo on, for since this is an Airtronics, is I use the same screw that cl clamps the clamp I use to not only attach the servo but clamp the clamp and that gave me a straight shot for our wheel here for our rod. Okay, so our rod goes through the hook and then back here snaps on. This is where the ball link goes. Remember, the ball link goes in a certain orientation. You don't want it flipped. This is adjustable by a few threads. Don't want to unscrew it too far. Uh, basically, you'll, you'll slide the servo on the boom until the servo arm's at 90, okay? And then what you want is your pitch slider slightly off-center toward the hub just a little bit. Later, when you set up your gyro, you'll slide the servo on the boom until this gets in the right position um, uh, to give you the full throw you need as well as uh, get your uh, gyro set up. Okay, so that's an overview of the tail. Basically we're done with the tail at this point and uh, we can move on to the next step.